there. I'd like to welcome you to the very first annual Joy of Painting series with me, PSR. If it's your first time joining us, I'd love it if you grabbed your rifle, your rattle can, and your creative spirit and paint along with us as we go. But before we get started painting and camouflaging our rifle, I gotta thank the sponsor of the Joy of Painting with PSR, and that is KAK Industry. KAK Industry has been around for just over 10 years, operating right out of the USA, making the best dang AR parts you could possibly ever want. It's a great combination of affordability and quality, and for that, we love them. The upper parts for the rifle we're gonna paint today are all KAK parts. If you want 10% off your order from KAK Industry, definitely don't use the code PSR. Don't do it. Thanks again to KAK for all of the support. Let's get started. First off, before we dive in, I gotta say, there's never a wrong way to paint a rifle, unless you don't paint it at all. Then that's wrong. So if you love your rifle, and you use your rifle, and you want to put a ring on it, paint it. So first, we're gonna go through a list of what you need to paint. Now in order to do this, you're gonna need a few things. Some are more important than others. First, you're gonna need a surface to paint on. You could do it in your mom's basement, but she'd probably be mad if you didn't have anything to paint on and fucked up her whole floor. In this case, I used a cardboard box and I did my painting outdoors. If you're doing your painting outdoors, you probably don't need a respirator, although it doesn't hurt. If you're indoors, I'd use a respirator. Next, you're gonna want something to protect your hands, like some nitrile gloves. In addition, you're gonna need an X-Acto knife and some painter's tape. Next, you're gonna want some sort of netting material. And this is optional, but you can also use stencils. In this case, I'm using primary arms stencils. And lastly, you're gonna need all your paints. The paints I'm using for this project are Rust-Oleum Khaki, Rust-Oleum Army Green, Hunter Specialties Olive Drab, Hunter Specialties Mud Brown, Rust-Oleum Deep Forest Green, and Rust-Oleum Earth Brown. Before we get started guys, it's important to remember that if you f this up, it's okay. I know I said you can't mess it up, but everyone's got their own standards and if you feel like you didn't do it well enough, you can always either repaint it or you can strip the paint off pretty easily. So really, it's not that serious. The rifle I'll be painting today is a KE Arms KP-15 with a KAK 20 inch barrel upper. It is more like a DMR style rifle. I've got a primary arm scope on top. It is a LPVO. It is their 1-6 to SLX-6 second focal plane scope. The handguard is KAK, the bolt and barrel are KAK, and like I said, it is a rifle length 20 inch barrel, and that lower is a polymer lower by KE Arms, it's called the KP-15. Now I insert the magazine in when I paint my gun, that way I don't get any paint inside the magwell, and you might want to do that too, but it's not required. Now you're going to take your tape and your X-Acto knife and start taping up the parts that you don't want painted. I usually like to leave some of the parts of the scope unpainted so I can tell what magnification it's going to be. I'm also going to tape the trigger up as well. What I usually do is roll up a piece of tape and stick it inside the barrel and the tip of the muzzle. That way I don't get any spare paint inside the muzzle. But I do usually paint the muzzle device itself. The other places you want to protect to make sure you don't paint are obviously your optic. If you are painting the optic, you don't want to paint over the glass. That won't end up very good. Stencil we're using today is a primary arms flectarn stencil. It's very helpful in getting some of those camo patterns that we're going to put on there, but it's not required. You can always use vegetation that you find in your environment, or just the netting alone, or you can get creative and use a piece of paper to do tiger stripes and all that stuff. All right, let's get started. First, you want to shake that sucker up real nice. And when we put on our first layer, we're going to go light to dark. So we're starting with the khaki. You just go light strokes on it, and I usually go in a diagonal fashion up and down the rifle. We're going to do a few different strokes here, and it doesn't matter. You just don't want to pour too much paint on it, but if you do, that's fine. It'll just take longer to dry. So we're going to be real, real gentle and do light strokes and just go back and forth all across that rifle. And the way I do it is I usually do one side, do the whole camo paint job on one side, and then I turn around and do the exact same camo paint job on the other side. Do they always look identical? No, but that's the joy of painting. So you just want to keep on stroking, get that scope, get the top of the rifle, and there's our first layer. Next up, we're going to go a second layer and just go nice and fast. Just make sure you don't go too much and get a hugely thick layer. You don't want any running, but in the end, like I said, there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. 
It doesn't necessarily matter what direction you're painting in. Here you can see I go all different directions and strokes. It really doesn't matter as long as you're getting good coverage on the top, the bottom, and of course the side of the rifle. So I usually wait between four and five minutes between each coat. You could wait longer, but I wouldn't wait more than 10 minutes between each coat that you make. All right, we're gonna fast forward here to being finished with the khaki and you can see it's a nice flat dark earth color and it just looks really rich and a great base coat for us to start on. Next up, we're gonna use our stencils. The color we're gonna use next is Rust-Oleum Army Green. And we're just gonna go along the rifle with our primary arm stencil, start with the buttstock and move forward. As you can see, we lay the stencil down right on that buttstock and shake that sucker up, shake it good, shake that paint real nice. And we're just doing light layers right across, quick, Try not to get too much soaked on there, and then we're gonna lift it up, and you can see that stencil does a great job. Now, you use these boxes in order to not get lines on the rifle, but sometimes you mess up, and that's fine. So you just wanna cover those other areas of the rifle so that you don't get those lines, and that's why we have those cardboard box pieces, but this isn't necessarily a requirement. And there you can see all of our rifle has that green, that army green Rust-Oleum looking good but we're not done yet not even close next we're going to use our net and you could use a laundry bag i got this from a fabric store i like that it was a little bit smaller fine netting and it leaves a really cool snakeskin pattern which i absolutely love the next color we're going to use is hunter specialties olive drab now we're going to use these diagonal strokes here and just go across the rifle and just do diagonal strokes and we're not going to use a stencil for this layer you can see here when I take this off, it's going to look great. Trust me. When we lift it off, that's when you start to see that snakeskin pattern come through. And it looks just great. So this is a little bit of a darker color green, and it really shines through. Next, we're going to use our stencils. And like I said, you don't always need to use the box, but the box helps. Here, I don't use the box. And we're going to go with our Mud Brown. This is a Hunter Specialties brand, Mud Brown. And we're taking it quick here. You can see it's working. And we're just going to do more of those Flectarn camo patterns all along the gun. On the handguard, nice and light. Remember, you don't need to go too hard, too heavy. But it's okay if you go too heavy, because remember, there's no such thing as mistakes. Only happy accidents. Don't forget to get your scope. Here, I just got a little bit too much on the scope, but that's fine, like I said. You know what, we make mistakes sometimes and we just keep on fixing them. So after we put that mud brown on there, it's starting to really look nice and camo, but we are not finished yet. The next color we're gonna use is Rust-Oleum Deep Forest Green, and we're gonna go over our stripes again, same way, except this time we're gonna use a stencil with the netting, and this is what adds a really nice depth and breaks up that pattern real nice. You can see we're just putting that camo stencil right over the netting, and we're getting that nice snakeskin in combination with the stencil. And don't forget to use the small parts of the stencil and the big parts of the stencil to really break up that pattern. Get the top of the scope as well here. And don't forget to get your mag as well. And the top of the buttstock. Now we lift it up and we are really getting much closer to a fully camouflaged rifle. Next color we're going with is a Rust-Oleum Earth Brown. And this is gonna be a pattern that we're gonna use the stencils without the netting. And this is gonna be our final layer. Remember guys, if you're feeling good about this, just keep on going. But if you're feeling bad about your job, you can always try again, start all over again. It's totally fine. Are you having fun? I sure am. Just a little squirt here and a little squirt there, a little squirt everywhere and you've got a camouflage rifle. So there we are, we've got our final product and it's looking absolutely great. Now I know your brain might be a little foggy from the paint, but I want you to sit back and look at the masterpiece you've just created with pride and joy. And if you're not feeling good about it, just start over again. And remember, there's no wrong way to paint a rifle. Now if you feel satisfied, I want you to turn that rifle over and do the same exact thing on the other side. I try to remember in my head the order in which I painted the rifle that way. It'll look similar on the other side, but you don't have to necessarily do that if you don't want to. Heck, you could do woodland on one side and air it on the other if you wanted. There's no rules. Now that we're finished painting our rifle, I say we take that rifle and bring it into the environment it's going to be used in. See how well it blends in. Let's take a look at this one.
before and here's the after and here's a time lapse of all the layers so you can see the progression you can't see it anymore no more black rifle my rifle is camo now if you enjoyed painting with us today and you'd like to see another episode of the joy of painting with psr please leave a comment and let me know i'd greatly appreciate it also if you're not following me on instagram it's print shoot repeat and on twitter printing guns if you want to support me you can support me on patreon or you can buy some of my merch and that'll be in the description guys it's important to remember if you love your rifle paint that thing thank you and until the next joy of painting series i hope you enjoy shooting your rifles and have fun painting. Take care. Bye-bye now. Yeah.